Hello everyone. I'm just sitting down here in the den just taking a, a little break. I've got my trusty tea cup here. Um, what would the world be like without tea? What a loss that would be. Anyway, I just finished taking a nitro patch off of my mother. We're trying to use nitro patches. Uh, I thought it was a pretty clever idea that the doctor put us on here. I'm sure it's used by many, but um, we're trying to use the nitro patch to increase the circulation in her arm, which has had um, a lot of vascular reconstruction done on it. And her hand doesn't have enough blood flow, becomes very uncomfortable at times. It's nearly always cold, <clears throat> so she's always trying to warm her hand etc etc in order to make her more comfortable we're trying these nitro patches but they can only stay on for 12 to up to i guess about 16 hours not i guess i know uh 12 not more than 16 hours and then you have to take them off for a few hours so we're giving it a try i so far do not see too much difference but some people have great success so we'll we'll keep going and see what happens uh, along with that, I thought I would, I, I brought my recipe book down here with me, oh, one of my recipe books, I, gee, I just love books, so I have loads of all kinds of books, including recipe books, in fact, right after we were married, um, I belonged to what was in those days a, a, a book club, they're not as popular now in this way, and that you subscribed for a monthly recipe book. <laughs> so I accumulated a lot of recipe books from, from that time. But I seldom use any of those anymore. I have a few recipes in some of them. I hold on to them because now and then there's something I like to go back and do. But, but um, since I've gone into cooking more according to specific plans... And right now I'm working with the whole foods, plant-based diet uh, or nutritional plan. And so I'm using a, an entirely different set of books than I had then. But at any rate, uh, I thought I'd just share with you what I did yesterday, which is a vegetable biryani. There, I think you can see it. And this is from a book. I'm going to go through the recipe book with you. This is from a book called Fat-Free, Flavorful by Dr. Gabe Merkin. Uh, Dr. Merkin was a mainly a sports physician, but, but more than that. And he has a, a couple of books. He has the 2030 Fiber Plan book. They've been out for a long time. And I've had these books, oh, let's see. I usually put the date in of when I got them. I don't think I did on this one. That's unusual for me. I, I usually put my name in a book and then sign the date when I got it. At any rate, I've had it for several years. But yesterday, I made a recipe from it that I've never made before. And it's this vegetable biryani. Now, typical Indian cooks, uh, cooks from India, make this with a crust and I'm saying cooks from India because I don't mean Native American cooking, I mean Asian Indian cooking. Um, and there, in that part of the world, it's typically made with a crust. It has a lot of ingredients in it. So it takes a lot of chopping of vegetables. But believe me, I decided after yesterday that it's worth it. So what it takes here is... Let's see, we've got, um, we've got bouillon. Dr. Merkin uses a lot of bouillon. I use a vegetable broth bouillon. Uh, brown rice, saffron. Now, saffron's kind of hard to find. <coughs> Excuse me, and very expensive, as you know. But I have a substitute for it. I, I use it sometimes, but I have a substitute for it, and I didn't want to use my real saffron 
in a recipe I've never tried before. Some people will say, well, that's exactly when you should use it. But to substitute for saffron, I use a mixture of turmeric and paprika, twice as much paprika as turmeric. And as luck would have it, this recipe calls for turmeric anyway. So it's saffron turmeric, and then I use double that amount of um, paprika, an onion, a sweet potato diced, a carrot, half a head of cauliflower, um, a green bell peppers, golden raisins. I didn't have any golden raisins, so I just substituted with regular raisins. Um, next time I'll try it with the golden ones, but it was very delicious this way anyway. Now, the spices. Grated ginger root. Uh, yes, I used the truly freshly grated ginger root, not powder or anything. Cumin, coriander, cinnamon, cayenne, um, some canned chickpeas, baby peas, frozen baby peas, a tomato, fresh tomato diced into it. And then at the end, you add cilantro leaves. Now, I happen to not like cilantro. I'm one of those people who think it tastes more like soap or perfume than something you should eat. And I just learned recently that that's actually a genetic thing. And I had my mother smell. the. <laughs> she has a very keen sense of smell. I had her smell the cilantro when I was chopping it. And if you could have seen the face on her. She's never eaten cilantro in her 96 years. And she says, how could anybody eat that? Well, I've eaten cilantro, but I don't enjoy it either, so I could identify with that. So it's not surprising to me that this is genetic when I saw the face she made. And you can serve it with mango chutney. Now, in the recipe, you make the rice, which is like a saffron rice, only remember I substituted for the saffron, but you make the rice and then add it to the vegetables. I chose to keep it separate and to serve it one on top of the other. I liked it a lot this way. And next time I might try it by mixing it together. But this is the fun thing about cooking. And believe me, on this nutritional regime, you get a lot of vegetables. And vegetables are not something that people typically eat enough of. So this is a, a really good way to really enjoy vegetables. So vegetables, uh, vegetable biryani uh, from a book of Dr. Gabe Merkin's Fat-Free Flavorful. If you decide to try it, let me know how you like it. I thought it was great. And with that, I'm going to continue sipping my tea, and we'll talk tomorrow. Bye-bye.